Short hair or long hair? Shoo, long. Yeah, yeah, long. definitely long. Yeah. Long <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Woodshop 101. This is episode number 161 for October 14th, 2019. I'm Drew Short of the Rockin' Age Woodshop, and I am joined today by my co-host Jeremy Crawford of the Countryside Workshop and our special guest host, Brandy Dibble of Eternal Harvest Decor. This is our second episode in our finishing series, and we are talking about top coats. So before we get started, Brandy, how are you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a fun conversation. I just feel it already. <laughs> it's already started. <laughs> Well, before we get started, we want to <laughs> no thank no our uh, patrons, John Raminger, Sean McHenry, Carl Mose, Neil Sims, Eric Roten, and Kenneth Aponte. Thank you guys very much for helping us keep the lights on out here. And if you want to become a patron of our Patreon campaign, then just head on over to patreon.com slash woodshop101. All our patrons receive an after show twice a month as a benefit. You can also support the show by purchasing some podcast swag. You can go to countrysideworkshop.com slash shop to check out all of our swag that we have available. While you're at it, go ahead and leave us a five-star rating on the podcast player of your choice. Like Goody111 said, this is a great podcast for people who are getting into woodworking. They have great guest hosts, and they are very real. Well, at least we're not fake. That's a, that's a good sign. So thank you for that uh, pinch me that comment. We appreciate it very much. Yeah, pinch me, please. So um, before we get started, Brandy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? We'd we'd uh, like to know what makes Brandy tick. Ooh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, so I am Brandy, Brandy Rudulovich, and I own Eternal Harvest Home Decor, and it's just a shop out of garage. I'm a mom of three. I homeschool, and I quit my job about four, I guess it's five, five years ago as a therapist. I was a mental health therapist. I have a doctorate in psychology, and I quit my job and decided to come home and be with my kids, and when I did that... I quickly realized we didn't have a budget for furniture and I wanted to redo everything in my house because I had a lot of time to sit around and look at it at that point. And so I started building and looking at plans and all of that kind of snowballed into a business that I now run out of my home. So that's me in a nutshell and I love it. I've definitely, I've got the bug and I'll continue doing this for life. A minute for life. That's it. So do- a doctorate. Yeah. yeah. Man. Got another doctorate in the house here. Yeah. Man, it makes, makes me feel like I've done a whole I'll lot I'll keep it under life. control, you guys. Yeah. I was about to say, we've wasted away our life. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've wasted oh, my guys, life Oh, guys, you know, my, husband, my husband's favorite phrase is, I'm so glad we paid for you to go to graduate school so that you can build things in our garage. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> You yeah. know, that's what I do. I mean, I so, don't anyway. have student loans, so I mean, I guess that's Dude. a plus. I don't either. I paid mine off three years ago, so. Guys, you're making me jealous. I have yeah, dreams about but my I don't student even loans. Have a college education? I mean, I have some college, but not a degree. I was about to say, you you got student loans, but you don't have a college education. No, I don't have student. <laughs> I, I don't have student loans. I've been very fortunate I'm, to not I'm have that. I'm a student but... loan person. I, uh, <laughs> I'm also okay. have no aspirations of Please going see. back to college. Um, <laughs> it, although it, it, lately, you know, I've been thinking about it just like to get more like business oriented. So when I retire in five years, I have something more than just like, ah, let me try this and see how this works for business. So. Um, I don't, what's that? What? Oh no, <laughs> I was gonna start start going into the questions, but if Ooh, you had something yeah. else, to nope, add. nope. I got some got some good questions. I saw that. Yeah. So good um, questions for Brady. What we like to do for our guests uh, before we start on the topic is we like to do some rapid fire questions. Now there's just the two of us. Sam's not gonna be here for this, uh, so we unfortunately won't get her <laughs> questions. But we have. <laughs> you guys two did questions. not prepare me for this. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> but uh, Jeremy and okay. I each have two questions, so if you can just give us a uh, direct answer in, you know, I- I'm not going to say 20 words or less, but just just give us some direct answers. That'd be great. So, Jeremy, what is okay. your first question? What is your favorite movie? Oh, you guys are gonna laugh. Nah. It's the Notebook. Oh, I love the Notebook. The Notebook. That, that's like so typical. No, is it? <laughs> okay. Is that okay? That's I a have, Nicholas Sparks a movie or something, right? Yeah, it's okay. a Nicholas. Sparks. It's got Dick Tracy. In it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore, oh. Dick, Dick yeah. Van Dyke. Oh, Dick no, Van Dyke. Wrong ones. <laughs> wrong ones. But guys, that's like an unfair question because I'm a movie person. So it's really hard for me to choose a favorite movie. I also really love Top Gun. I also really love um, Top Gun. Like, Top Gun 2 is about to come out. I know. I'm, I'm so... so ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> I I love the first Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie, and it's so hokey now, but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> so hokey. Dude, you there's know, a lot of movies you know, I used to watch that's hokey now. Seriously, yeah. you go back and you're like, this used to be better. This used to be a better movie. It's like the A-Team used to be so much better acting when I was a kid. <laughs> now it's awful. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So it's an unfair question, but if I had to pick one, I'd go with that one. Probably just because I haven't watched it in a while and I want to. So, you know, there you go. All right. Okay. Um, what is your favorite food? My favorite food is seafood. Do I have to pick, like, one one thing within the genre? or yes. <laughs> uh, Crab. Cra- oh, that's a good pick. Ooh. So you like crab, crab cakes. Did just oh, have yeah. a crab boil the other day. That was... Crab's uh, awesome. See, you're over there where you can get really great seafood, Jeremy, yeah. and I'm super, super jealous. Yeah. I'm in Utah, guys. Like, there's nothing out here for me. Yeah, how yeah. fresh I is your like, seafood, really? I San Francisco. I was about to say, I, your not... food is like mine. It's like uh, fresh, packaged fresh in China or something like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and like fresh that morning. That's like... <laughs> That's, a, that's as fresh as it gets. But I grew up in San Francisco. I was right by the harbor. Like, I used to get... Anyway, so yep. seafood, crab, that's my favorite food. I like yeah. stuffed mushrooms with crab meat. That's good stuff. Oh, that is good stuff. You're making me hungry. Ah. Yes. Ah. And wow. nachos. I'm going to add nachos to that because that is something Ooh. I can get right now. <laughs> nachos with crab meat sprinkled on <laughs> Oh, I gotta try that. God, That's a great I'm idea. I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> All right, if you could be one superhero, who would it be? Captain Marvel. Ooh, yeah. elaborate. Uh, she's the. I mean, I know who it powerful. is, but why? Well, do I have to elaborate? <laughs> I mean, I kind of want to know she's... your reasoning behind it, but I don't she's disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um... Well, let me think about that because it, it, every every time I get asked that question, I'm like Captain Marvel without without any thought. That's who I would want to be. I mean, she flies through space. She has all crazy power. Um, but if we're gonna get into the psychology of it, I also like how she has to become. She has to go through her human emotions before she figures out who she is and really harnesses that power. And I kind of love that. Captain so. Marvel with short hair or long hair? Shoo, long. Yeah, yeah, long. definitely long. Yeah. Long. Hair. <laughs> I, I was not. I was not loving the short hair. No, nope. yeah, nope. definitely long. I'm yeah. sorry, but yeah, I wasn't either. The powers. Like, yeah, I was not. I was not yeah. doing that. She can fly through space, but can she turn the Earth's axis backwards and make time go in reverse? That's that's yeah, Superman. I mean, look, she probably she Superman. probably can, Drew. <laughs> Superman is. She just hasn't tried yet. That's, you know, the song oh, well, it had a reason. Maybe she needs yeah. somebody to get off she really likes so she could do it. Yeah, and Jeremy, I think they I think they shot um oh gosh, what movie is it that that she has short hair? Endgame. It's Avengers, right? Endgame. right? Endgame. Endgame. Yes. So I think they shot that before they shot her movie. And so she wasn't quite into her character yet. So she had short hair in that one and then she got long hair in her movie. Yeah. They're extensions, that's what it is. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Just, just glue. Maybe. 
It All could right. be. All right, I Drew, what you got? Okay. Yeah, let's get, we got to get off that subject. Uh, Sorry. What, what, besides woodworking, what is your, I guess, second favorite hobby? Since woodworking is, of course, woodworking is your business, right? Yeah. Okay. And a hobby. So what's your, it, it's both. It's both. Well, what would um, you say your favorite hobby is, aside from woodworking? Well, gosh. Do you I play favorite hobby is being a psychologist. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and analyzing everybody I meet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and this conversation's over. Goodbye. Getting a doctorate, <laughs> making people feel like crap. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I think, I don't know. I would say fixing up my house, but that's kind of woodworking. That's the same. Like DIYing, is that the same no, as woodworking? That's, that's remodeling. That's different. I would say that's okay. different. Okay. Okay, so that I love that. I love designing and redoing spaces and fixing up spaces, but that sounds so like exactly the same thing. So <laughs> that's lame. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Watching movies is my okay. hobby. I don't know. So in the remodeling field of you know fixing up spaces, which one? What what room is your favorite to fix up? That's a trick question because once I'm done with one, I move on to the next one. <laughs> okay, if you could start with one and you had your preference and money's no object, what room would you start with? Oh, my living room. Really? And then, I, yeah, yeah, my living room. There's some things I'd really like to do in there, and then I'd probably move on to a couple bathrooms in our house. <clears throat> yeah, that's oh. if you had two bathrooms in the house, it'd be. That'd be a good one to start with because you can always shut the door off on one. <laughs> exactly. You can't go in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've I've actually been working on a bathroom in our basement for like a year, and I hate working on the tile so much that it's stalled. It's been stalled for like a year. I'll do like a row, and then I'll take a break and not come back for a while. <laughs> <laughs> It's and, bad. It's bad. And I'll, I'll just put up this towel right now. Okay, I'll come back in a week. <laughs> then I'm like, I hate that so much. I'm leaving now. <laughs> then I'll come back later. <laughs> and then you come back and you're like, I really don't like that towel. Let's take that one down. Exactly. Let's get something new. <laughs> let's try that again. <laughs> let's, let's... No, that one's been bad, but but I it'll be good when it's done. That one I've had a really hard time finishing. So anyway. Yeah, you know, I'm still working on my kitchen. So I, are I you? Got... Yeah, I've uh, you know I painted it pretty recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm in the middle of making all the upper doors, and I got to order the glass because now I got the doors made. I know how big the glass needs to be, um, so I got to order that this week. And I've got the hardware on order; it should be in soon. Um, and how then many I got some glass work. doors. Uh, thir no, thirteen. Yeah, oh, thir wow. thirteen. Um, no. Why? <laughs> <laughs> glass stresses me out. You know this. I talked to you about when I did that glass barn door. I was like, ah. I mean, it well, turned out great, and I loved it in the end. But it's a lot of I, work. I got a price quote because my wife originally, and I wanted this too, was seeded glass, where it yeah. looks like rain, kind of like raindrops inside of the glass. Yeah. Uh, that's how they used to make glass before yeah. they refined it. Um, but the price that I got for just those 13 doors was $1,200. Yep. And I was like, oh, my God. I said, okay, how much is it for normal glass for all of that that I need? And he said, oh, 168 I'm like, yeah, no brainer. What? Was that tempered glass? Too? Uh, yeah, I think so. Because I told oh him it was for, for kitchen doors. You have better pricing than me. That's ah. crazy. Just the one when I did my barn door for regular tempered glass pieces that were like 16 by I think 18. it was going to cost me 275 bucks um well it's like good how, heavens how thick I went with like an eighth it was super thin really because that's what I'm getting is eighth inch hmm. yeah I don't I've know got... mine's, mine's pretty cheap I you have well, better price well in South Carolina <laughs> I could get in fact, I paid twenty five dollars for a two by four sheet of glass just a couple wow. months ago. Wow, guys, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving uh, just for the glass having... prices. There's no crab here, and no I need glass, warnings. so <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, well, 
everybody's curious what is always going on in our shops. So I, I'm curious what is going on in yours currently. Because you'd said that you're about to shut down your shop. Yeah, I, I shut down my shop every winter because it's too cold and I don't have a air any kind of, of regulation in there as far as air goes. So it gets freezing and it gets way hot in the summertime. But at least in the summertime, I can open my door and I get a little bit of a breeze and that's doable. But in the winter, nothing sets. You guys know, then you're dealing with wood movement and all sorts of stuff. So I just close up shop for the winter, except for small things. I always tell people I'm closing up shop. And then my husband's like, I thought you weren't doing anything. And I'm out there doing whatever. So (laughs) it's never fully closed, but for the big things like tables and entry tables and coffee tables, I do, I do stop producing things and taking orders. So right now I'm finishing up an entry table and herringbone entry table. And then I have a few little mosaics and art pieces that I'm working on. Um, But other than that, I don't have anything big going on. Yeah. I saw the mosaics. Those look pretty. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. They're fun. I actually really yeah. enjoy doing so, those. So. so I heard. So, I, when you were on Donnie's podcast and you were telling this exact same thing that you know your your shop's closed and stuff and sh- and and how you stay busy and, and I'm I'm sitting here yelling you in my head like, why? Just buy a heater. Why? <laughs> Stop. Just buy a heater. And then and then you're like. But it works out because, you know, we, we're, we're coming into Thanksgiving and Christmas and these holidays and they stay busy and I want to stay focused. And I'm like, all right, all right, you know what? She's starting to make sense. She's being reasonable because if she bought a heater, then she knew she would already be out there taking away from family. I was like, <laughs> you know what? She's smart. I got that. Got that. Like, that's, that's reasonable. Well, there's that, but then there's also my husband and I have a deal that he gets to park his car in the garage over the winter time, and so I lose a lot of my shop during the winter time um, because of but that. But you tell him, you say, it's, look, it could, your car could be heated. Like, I, if I got shop heat, your car, well, it would be warm for you no to walk out there. to work. That's true. That's true. But, but then they, there's no room to work. But that's when you just back his car out. Yeah, and then you just tell him that like, you want it back up when you're done. Yeah, <laughs> and then you forget about it, That's and you forget the next people. day, and the next day, and then eventually he'll just accept the the, the defeat that it'll never be in there again. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Either that, or he'll get his he'll get even. He'll leave the car shut, or leave the garage door shut, and turn his car yep. on, and then she'll be like, "Okay, smells like carbon yeah. monoxide in here. You can't work." <laughs> Or he'll leave the door open and everything will be shot to heck. (laughs) So, you know, no, but honestly, like we have a crazy family tree on both sides of our families. Like I, I have a couple families. He has, his dad's been married twice. We have lots of places. So Thanksgiving and Christmas is like crazy town in our house. Like we have to go somewhere almost every day, every night. And I tried to stay open through the winter when I first opened my business the first few years. And it was so insane as far as getting orders done and trying to meet people and go to family things and handle everything that I was just a wreck. And so finally I was like, okay, okay, you're right. I'll just close down for the winter and do a couple small things to keep things moving and for content purposes. And because I like it, like I can't, I can't fully stop even when I tell them I'm going to (laughs) stop. Can't fully stop creating and building. So anyway, so it just works out and it's only for a few months and then I get to open back up again. So it works okay. Yeah. So say cheese. (laughs) So (laughs) Drew, what's going on in your shop besides these 13 glass doors? Um, Well, the, the glass doors are just for me. Um, I'm kind of working on those when I can, but right now I've got, mm, sounds like a five year project. No, mm, take it from me, man. Don't do that. <laughs> mm, no. like it's, not, it's, it's not that bad. I, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, I'm recording some new videos. I've got a project that I'm working on right now for a client. Um, it's two step back hutches that are about, uh, 27 inches wide. 
that are going to have glass doors on the top and then um, just a frame and panel door on the bottom with fixed shelves. I tried to get her to do um, adjustable shelving, but she didn't want to. So <laughs> I've also got to stain it really dark. She wants it like ebony dark. Um, oh, wow. Black hardware. So, I mean, it's like, it's going to be real dark. Um, but anyway, they're going to flank a fireplace. Like they've got a, a really low rise hearth fireplace that goes up the wall and where the rock stops. That's where they want these two cabinets. So um, I'm recording all that uh, pretty much the same way I did the Murphy bed. Uh, which, by the way, that Murphy Bed video is airing tomorrow. So it'll already be aired whenever you guys see this, because it'll be a few <laughs> days later. But still, um, I, I've got plans that I'm, I'm finishing excited. out today, getting them uploaded to my website so people can build the Murphy Bed that I did. So, But yeah, it's it's been pretty busy. I've got a, a couple of other smaller items that are in the shop for clients that I'm just kind of working in. Um but right now these hutches are kind of taking priority. Yeah. So. Nice. But that's what I got. Nice. I'm so excited for your Murphy bed video. I want to build <laughs> that eventually down the road. But I'm excited. I remember when you were making it, I was like, oh, this is going to be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was nice when it was installed. And actually, I ran into the owner at Home Depot today. So <laughs> um, it was kind of kind of a coincidence. I was like, your, your video is coming out tomorrow. And she's like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> like she cares she's like i'll just go watch how you built it <laughs> yeah. we'll see what you did to skimp on it yeah mm -hmm. where, where did you where did you tell me it was gonna be fancy and, and <laughs> I, I see all this glue you're using what what is this i need skimp to go to ikea in this part <laughs> no. oh why, why are you skimping on these screws here you're using a whole lot of glue <laughs> okay no, that's going to be good. Drew, I don't know how you make so much content. Like, you've got, for YouTube, that's hard stuff to edit and keep going all the time. Well, back whenever I had my full-time job, um, I did it on the weekends. And mm -hmm. I was I was really, really trying to pump stuff out every week. And I did that for a good long while. But after some time, I got a little burnt out, and I had to slow down. And now that I'm working full-time doing this... I got deadlines to meet and I can't record everything. So yeah, it's, it's kind of, I have to pick and choose a little bit on what I do. Yeah. It's hard. <clears throat> yeah. So. so what about you, Jeremy? Um, nothing really coming out of the shop. Um, finally got, oh, well then let's, let's go to fi the next finally section, got, right? uh, <laughs> some electrical going. Um, in fact, I was just telling you guys before we start airing that the lights finally went in last night and, super super bright like way Pull brighter video back up. way yeah let's see if i can find way brighter than my old fluorescent tubes i had in the old shop so i have one two i have 16 L four foot leds from american green light and it's ridiculous you have to go to the youtube video and check this out so that's my shop black whoa yeah like it powers on it's like oh <laughs> Your screen is all blurry. That's why you need uh, unblur your background oh, and do it again. Oh. All right, so I could see it go though. That was let's cool. See, let's see. Unblur your background. It's like night and day. Yeah. Whenever so, you get new lighting, it's crazy. So this is my shot, black. Like that's with all the lights off. And <laughs> <laughs> it really is like angels. Yeah. Get skylights in there. <laughs> <laughs> so. You guys got to go check it out. I'll, I'm going to put it up on Instagram, um, either now or tomorrow. But it's like night and day difference, you know, with just like struggling in two like little little light bulbs on one side of the garage. Um, mm -hmm. And it's my shop's twice the size that it was in South Carolina. It's I'm floating at almost 800 square feet. So having these two like little 40 watt light bulbs was, was like <laughs> take a flashlight out there at night. So. <laughs> But we definitely, um, so we got, we got all the, the conduit and everything ran, um, got the sub panel up. Um, now we just got to work on, um, pulling actual, all the wires through, um, and put on the plugs and then we should be at a wrap for that. Um, and then it's all about just moving it in. I mean, I, I've done, um, I went, went ahead and sheathed all the walls in plywood, um, painted it while it was there, um, 
so I did like a high, like a high reflective white paint. Um, just kind of help bounce that that light a bit a little bit more. So it should be good. I will have to upgrade um, the the garage door openers, um, which is something more functional over just because it, I have like old chain style and they're loud. They shake. So my living room is right above <laughs> the garage and they shake you like you could feel the floor shaking when they're like activated. Um, <laughs> like, oh, that's good. Yeah. And so it really makes me miss that Ryobi one that I had in the last shop. Um, so I will be installing two, two Ryobi ones in the shop. Um, and then the next couple weeks we'll heat, um, we'll be going in the shop. Um, and I also uncovered a hidden gem. I have a window in the shop that, that I, uh, uncovered. Like it was, so I knew it was there, but it was, it had like a, a frame and like in plywood, like actually bolted through this window. Um, and I couldn't understand why. And it was, yeah. the outside was painted over. So it looked just like the outside of the house. And what in the world? Um, why? I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't know why, because so it's it is on the lower level, so it's a walkout basement. So I'm thinking maybe some somebody didn't live here for an extended period of time, so they boarded it over, and then just kept it there and painted it. And um, so I, I just got curious. I started hmm. unbolting it and mo- removing all the the wood from it, and sure enough, I got a, a solid window that looks out at over the lake. So um, oh my gosh, even over the lake, and they. <laughs> what the world yeah so i look so so i live on a f- like full one acre um on the lake so um i definitely kind of lucked into this shop here so it's it's pretty cool i'm glad i was like the 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 shop's taking shape um slower i'm i'm dying and i have deadlines to meet already um so i'm uh my wife already signed me up for our first event december 14th don't even have a shop <laughs> And I got an oh, event. Geez. Like I'm not even oh, regis- business registered in Rhode Island yet, and <laughs> so it's <clears throat> it's going to be a busy couple weeks. Um, but it, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm dying not being able to to get out in the shop. There's so many things that we want to build for the house, and and uh, yeah. And so it's it, it's coming. It's just, it's slow, but you know each step you just look and you're like wow, like it's it's taking shape. And, and I was a little bit more determined, you know, like. When you get into a shop, you kind of build it over the time you're you're there, mm-hmm. you know. So after four years or eight years, like, you know, you're finally at a point. You're like, oh, you know, I just changed small things here and there. Well, I was pretty determined to get this shop to the point that my last shop was. Like, I I had heating and AC, I had all the electrical, all light. So I was at the point that I was like, I didn't want to start all over and ha- and be like, all right, well, we'll just do a little bit as we go. So I invested a good chunk of money just to up front to get it ready to go. Um, mm. You know, it's that because I'm ready to just get back into it and start building the furniture again and not have to go back to that struggle of three or four years ago with a new shop. It's like, oh, I got this one plug in that corner. Let me run like 12 extension cords to it, you know? So uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely excited to have ample power in, in the shop. So. It's mm. going to be great. It sounds like it's going to yeah. be awesome. I I have a question about your LED lights. Yeah. How do you guys determine? Do you have LEDs too, Drew? No, I have, I have T8 fluorescents. Okay. They're daylight bulbs, 5, 5K daylight bulbs. Okay, so that was my question. How do you determine whether you get daylight or bright white or what's so, best for the shop, do you guys think? So don't be fooled by like the the, the wording bright white cool lights daylight like look at the kel look at the kelvin um they say five thousand kelvin is is good is is the daylight rendering six thousand kelvin is what the sun would be at 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 high noon as bright as it can be so my last shop had six thousand kelvin in it um and i loved it this one has five thousand but you also have to look at the the color rendering index, right. and the exactly. higher that yeah. number. And how do you what's that? So you want to get in the high. Uh, it's it's scale zero to a hundred. Closer mm-hmm. to a hundred means you're getting the truest colors um, under that light. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so 
you want to go find like so the ones I have now are 95 and that's about as high as as any manufacturer has right now um mm. you know so mm-hmm. when you're looking at if you're going to go with like a T8 uh, fluorescent shop around on bulbs to find who has the best um color color uh rendering index um LEDs have just come such a long way that it's almost like impractical to go back with a fluorescent tube if you're putting in new lighting or you're retrofitting lighting. Um, you know, they make even um, the T8s make um, the, like the, the fluorescent tubes make um, LED um, tube lighting to go in them that you can retrofit. Um, so it's it, when, when you're looking at it, LEDs just usually have a better CRI. Um, just it's newer technology. So, yeah, um, we'll see. And, and my question is always, well, okay, so I'll invest in these lights and I'll, I'll make them really bright. I'll get the truest color, but you can't guarantee that your customers or other people will have those same colors in their house, you know, so they're going to think they're getting one color. You're, you're right. And it, and you're not, and it's not necessarily, um, I don't necessarily use that for like picking stains and stuff like that. I use it for working i'm able to see the yeah. light the lines better i'm able to see um you know uh, i'm able to see my work piece i'm able to see the table saw that's true um, a little bit better um that's sure. so that's why i go with the the brighter lights that i can you know the five to six thousand kelvin but then the yeah uh, the color index it helps especially if you're recording because your white your your white balance is easier to balance that way um you know, so the, so the colors yeah. your camera is going to pick up are a little bit uh, more vibrant. What so, is it that right. you have to adjust? Because LEDs can, you, sometimes you can see the flickering in your video because of the mm-hmm. alternating. Um, I don't know. So I haven't recorded in them. And I know I do know that there's a flicker. Um, but I'll have to reach out. No, I think, I think Adam from Lazy Guy DIY has LEDs and I, at some point I, I remember talking to him about the flicker. So I've talked to him and see if he's done anything, but then I know, um, Jay Bates has the same lights I have. Um, Mark Spagnola has the same lights. Um, and I think there's a few others out there that have, that I know have the American green light, um, LEDs that I'll reach out to and, and see if they've done anything. Um, because I think, I think it has, you have to change the cameras, like a speed setting in the camera, if I remember right, but I'm not 100%. Um, because it's just like the yeah, LEDs. You have to post about it. Yeah, like the LEDs. I know that like the refresh rate of the LEDs is different than the usually different than right. the camera. You have to sync them so that you're not right. catching catching the refresh rate on them. Right. Yeah. So. You'll have to post when you figure that out. That would be interesting to see. Yeah. I'd like to see that. In other words, she wants you to do the work. So she mm-hmm. can benefit from your yes. fruits of labor. You know when, when I do the work, I'm really just going to ask I'm some people thinker. that have already done the work. <laughs> it's like passing notes, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> what did she put? B? Okay. Uh, I got that. Okay. <laughs> will you Will you go to the dance with me? Yes or no? Pass that. Pass that down. <laughs> Check the box. No, 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 no. Check not, the not, box. Not, not you. Not sh- God Next dang person. it. <laughs> Oh, goodness. And, oh, Brandy, and you were talking about me putting out content. I, I started another YouTube channel with my daughter. Are, are you serious? How do you have time? What in the world? Well, this is this is a golf channel. So she, oh. she started playing golf and really, really likes it. And I said, well, would you want to start a, a YouTube channel for golf? And we could do, like, course vlogs whenever we go play. And uh, we can feature the course that we're at and show people, you know, how our game has advanced with every passing That's awesome. video. So, That's oh, genius. Yeah. So, She's adorable, by the way. You should, you She's should, so funny. Yeah, you should get um little GoPro and mount it to um, the pillars of the golf cart um, and just call it, like, um, golf cart confessionals or something. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> like and that way, camera. so that way as you're driving, both of you, and, you know, both of you can talk to the camera as you're driving around <laughs> and be like, all right, we're going to get out and go hit this ball. Like, you know. <laughs> Uh, well, I just got some new audio mics for uh, my cell phone. They actually worked with my cell phone, uh, so I don't have to carry around that big Cannon. Yeah, because uh, that can be kind of bulky. Um, but yeah, did we, you post about that? Yeah, yeah, they're uh, called Full Aim. Yeah. Uh, they're wireless, wireless right? Mm-hmm. 
The wireless, yeah. But it's that, a those looked awesome. Two channel microphone setup, so she could wear one and I could wear one, and it comes through uh, the phone simultaneously without any uh, overpowering of the other. Nice. Wow. That's pretty cool. Okay, so um, our topic for this particular episode is um, our favorite ways to apply different types of finishes. Uh, so I guess we all have a favorite finish, and we did talk about uh, like what our kind of favorite finish is on the last episode, I believe. Um, yeah, it was stain wise, you know, but that's right. It was stain. Yeah. Uh, but anything to, to use for top coats. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't discussed that. Um, so I think we're all going to have a, a pretty variety, pretty wide variety of favorites on this. Cause I know that Jeremy uses something different than I do. And I'm pretty sure that Brandy uses something different than the both of us. So yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I never know. So what, what is your favorite top coat? that you use and, and, and yeah. manufacture if you have one. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, it differs, I guess it depends on what I'm making and what it needs to be used for. But for a lot of my kitchen tables, um, I've talked to you about this. I think drew, I really like to use a spray lacquer or a lacquer that I can spray with a gun. Um, but there's also a deft acrylic that I really like as well. And I use that one a lot and I feel like it's really, really close to a lacquer because lacquer is sometimes hard for me to spray and and to contain in my yeah. shop I don't have a good system I don't have a super great gun but the deft is water-based and so it's a water-based acrylic and I feel like it dries just as hard or really close to probably not just as hard and, and nice as the lacquer but it's really really close so that's one that I really like for sure where do you pick that up at that's just at Home Depot it's just at Home Depot, and they've they've got oh. it right along with all their other Deft products. Have you so, seen Deft at Home great. Depot down here? I, oh, maybe it's only no, a Utah the, thing. No, the only Deft product I've ever seen at Home Depot, well, I don't want to say ever, but like finish-wise, is like a ra rattle can lacquer. That's the only like oh. Deft that I haven't seen any like acrylics, anything like that. Usually it's yeah, so, um, like Rust-Oleum or Minwax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, hmm, I'll have to see if and we I like, have it around here. I like both Rust-Oleum and Minwax. I've used both, both of those in general finishes. But I feel like the Deft, and it comes in the gallon size. So you have to buy a gallon if you want it. They don't have it in the yeah. quart size. Um, uh, see, that may be one because I usually so. don't go look. For, if I'm getting gallon a finish i'm usually going to yeah um you know more of a specialty store um like right. like worth group or something like that um, yeah so may so maybe i don't know i haven't looked in the gallon section so um yeah do, do you like maybe this like do you like to spray that or or brush yeah. it like so that's your, that's I've done your both. so what I've is done your both. preferred method like do, when you do you prefer to spray I would, no, no, not really. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, well, she, I don't know. She, she thought about it for a quick second. She's like, yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it depends, guys. It depends on how many coats I have to do. Because when you're spraying, with the deft especially, um, sometimes it can dry too fast. And then you have to t take down the layer you just put down to get a smooth finish. So sometimes for me, I think I need a better gun than I, I need one like Drew has. Drew has a really nice yeah, gun. You need an HVLP. Um, the, yeah. You, 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 need a, you need an HVLP I don't, system. I don't have a great gun. Yeah, a Fuji system is, is the way to go. I have an HVLP, but I don't have a Fuji. See, I just have the, I have the purple gun from Harbor Freight. Have you used it before? Yeah, but see, you're using no. HVLP. You're using the HVLP conversion gun, conversion gun with a compressor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The, a turbine unit, even because I've sprayed with a conversion gun as well, and and they do work. Um, and I know Fuji makes a a pretty good one, um, conversion gun for that. But yeah, um, I feel like turbine just getting the low pressure, um, from the turbine is almost foolproof. Like it's just like you don't have to worry about dialing down the pressure you don't have to worry about like like plug it in it goes it provides the pressure that i need that's it yeah. which so. would be amazing yes i would love 
something like that. But, you know, I've had to make do with what, with what I can afford at the time as I'm moving through these projects and building up my business, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so Sounds I've good. I've both brushed and sprayed. And so, yeah. Yeah. Eventually, one day, I'll have a nice gun. <laughs> Yeah. Right now, she's got to get a new computer, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, one thing at a time, you guys. You just keep adding to my list one hey, by I'll... one. She's got a yeah. shop. Yeah. Yeah. Her husband's really going to like us. <laughs> yeah. She's oh, like, a heater. She's got to do a heater. She's going to be like, here's here's my Christmas list. What? It's like $5,000 <laughs> like worth that. of stuff. <laughs> Yeah. I've already been working on him to move so that we can upsize the garage and downsize the house. And yeah. that's been a long sell, you guys. You know He's just barely coming around. Well, we well just tell him how much glass costs down here, and that's what's, that's the sell right there. That is, yeah. We, we, sure. def- we definitely did do that. We we downgraded the house and upgraded the shop. So That's a goal of mine. <laughs> I would like to go smaller, though. I would... Kids leave the kids leave the house. I'd like to go to under a thousand square foot house. Yeah. So. And an over a thousand square foot shop. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, like fifteen hundred. Yeah. I don't know how I'd fill it, but I'm sure I'd figure it out. So, I right, drew. What about you? What's your favorite favorite finish um, to use? Um, ever since I started my my full time business. Um, Learning how to how to spray finish has been my my choice way to go, and I've developed methods on how to make it more efficient, so I don't feel like I have to, um, you know, break out. Because a lot of people don't like spraying because they don't like mixing. They don't like setting up the gun. Mm-hmm. Once you get it all set up, you know, spraying is a breeze, uh, but it's that initial setup, and then cleaning it after you're done. And I've worked on ways to get that more efficient for me because I am like that. I'm like, oh, I gotta spray. Oh, let me check my phone. <laughs> find something that i gotta do just to prolong it just a little bit uh-huh. but uh i i do prefer to spray I, I really don't like brush i don't like you know rolling anything on i, I just don't like the marks that it leaves um spraying is my best my favorite way to apply but my favorite top coat that I like to spray is um, a pre-cat lacquer or even a conversion um, conversion varnish. Uh, I haven't messed a whole lot with conversion uh, just because of the fact that you do have to mix it in your shop. So it can be a little bit more um, troublesome and, and kind of tedious to do. Uh, pre-cats are already mixed. All you got to do is just thin it and add some retarder and, and go. Um, and it dries real fast. It gives a really nice uh, even coat. And sanding is minimal, especially if you use a sanding sealer for your first coat. Uh, it makes the lacquer go on a lot better. But um, I, I, I've done things like polyacrylic, especially if the weather doesn't really permit me to spray lacquer. Like if it is too um, too much moisture in the air or um, I've used like a, a water-based paint and I can't spray lacquer on top of it, then I'll spray polyacrylic on top of it. Uh, and it dries just as fast, and it sands real nice too. So, those are my two that I that I go to the most. Um, do you use specific like sanding sealer, um, or what? What do you use for for that? Anytime that I use a pre cat lacquer, it is always recommended to use a pre cat uh, sanding sealer because if you do use a standard sealer that uh, doesn't have that pre catalyzing agent in it then you're eventually going to get uh, micro fractures in your finish, causing moisture to not only seep in, but moisture to seep out from inside the wood, and it causes blushing underneath your lacquer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned that the hard way once, and it was very noticeable on a table that I did. It was walnut. So um, the client was cleaning off the table with nothing but a wet paper towel because uh, she didn't want to damage the finish. Well, unfortunately, the finish was damaging itself, and as she was wiping it off, the moisture from the rag just seeped into the microfractures of the finish and started blushing really bad, not to mention it started peeling later. So oh, you do have to use an appropriate sealer when you use a pre-cat. Yeah. Um, one that I've been I've been testing a little bit just on self-projects for me um, and done some, some, some pretty good research about it um, is – using shellac under a pre-cat lacquer mm-hmm. um and and supposedly it's supposed to hold up i've 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 done it on a few things um but i definitely did it on a bigger table for a buddy um that that i helped him build i kind of t- taught him how to build it 
Um, it was on that, that Sapili table I built and drew that big round one. Um, right. And I told him, I said, hey, I want to test this finish. Like, there's no, like, I know the lacquer is going to be bomb proof, but I, you know, I want to see the durability of it. Um, and I did. I, I threw down um, de wax shellac, um, sprayed it down, um, sanded it. I sprayed two coats um, and then went back with the, that pre cat lacquer. Um, and I'm, you know what? I love how the, the, um, shellac just like brought out the grain it almost reminded me like i was putting down an oil finish um that way when you know the clear went on top i'm getting the effects of the uh, or i'm getting the 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 look of the, the like the oil or the the shellac but i'm getting the durability of the pre-cat lacquer um so i so far i mean it's been i don't know several months since we finished that and it's held up um so I'm definitely keeping an eye on it and, and <laughs> letting him know. Like, I just, I'm, I'm just curious. And he's got three um, boys, that are like five, eight, and ten, I think. And they're, I mean, they're tip, typical boys. They bounce off the wall. So I'm, like, really curious to see how it's holding up. Um, so, Good. you know, it's well, something, something to test. And, and using pre-cat on a kitchen table or something that's going to be of personal use is is, a, is an okay finish to do. But yeah, not, on. Um, not on anything that's like restaurant-type tables. Mm-hmm. You need something oh, yeah. a lot stronger, like a conversion varnish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Do you spray, Jeremy, as well? Or do. do you brush? No, I do. Um, so I would say, like, my, my favorite finish to, to do... Hands down, I would do it every single day if it weren't so toxic and killing me is um, Armor <laughs> Seal from General Finishes. Like, I just, I love, um, I, I do a wipe on, wipe off with it. Um, and I mm-hmm. love how it, it enhances the wood. Um, and, but now, I mean, just the older I get, and, and especially with, you know, client projects, um, having to pump them out and stuff is, I just, you know, I definitely go with the more of the, the water base or the pre-cat lacquer or something that dries a little bit faster. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, sometimes there, it just, the, there's a project that just calls for it, and it is my favorite. Um, I love how it goes on. I love how the project looks. Um, but, no, I, I will say the probably the last two years, I've gone more to the spraying of um, pre-cat lacquers. Um, I've sprayed some shellacs. I've sprayed some water-based finishes as well. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite way of applying finish. I think a wipe on wipe off is more my favorite. Um, but it's, I've, I've had, I had a lot of issues. So I, I have a Fuji system and I had a lot of issues with my gravity feed gun. Um, but so far, um, I've worked with them. They've been very helpful the whole way. Um, that's why I stand behind Fuji. Like I, you know, the customer service is done above and beyond more than what they should have um on my unit and so they i I've, they finally gave me a uh, nylon cup instead of the metal cup and i've had nothing but great results with that one so far um, That's good. i do want to convert it over to um 3m makes a cup that that has a um bag in it that that mm-hmm. keeps the that keeps the all the product pushed down to to the uh needle so want to try that that, Um, yeah yeah, so i would say i mean my go-to finishes now is spraying um depending Mm -hmm. on the project depends on what it is i've not done any conversion varnish but i do want to test into the conversion varnish just so i know that i can offer it um as as an option so i'm looking at building another tabletop for um one of the tables here in our house um, and I think I'm going to try a conversion varnish on it just to have something Practice. different. Yeah. Test it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. You guys probably talked about this last week, but did you guys discuss Rubio Monaco at all? No, we didn't. Oh, no. And I was actually no. going to say, I was actually going to say yeah. that too for, for kitchen mm. tables. Cause I, I really like applying it to tabletops. Yeah. So, you know, I've, so I've applied, I haven't applied it to a tabletop. I've applied it to, um, what have I, I, a shadow box and I've applied it to a few other things mm-hmm. and I was going to apply it to my dining room table and I went to yeah. this floor um, you know floor company that had it and the guy told me he was like oh no for a dining room table he's like no you know, you 
yeah, you definitely don't want to use that. And I was like, why? Like, it's supposed to be like this easy finish and bomb proof. And he's like, no, man. He's like, if, if you leave like any kind of water on the surface, like it's going to start showing rings will stop pulling up. And I was like, oh, no, heck no. I don't want that. I got kids. Like, they'll ruin this thing. <laughs> and then I, uh, I talked to Keith and he explained from, from Rubio and he explained a few things to me. Um, and then, um, Sam went to their event and came uh-huh. back and explained some stuff to me and, and just talking to a few people, they're like, dude, it's Rubio's a floor finish. Like it's a hardwood floor. Floors finish. get wet. Yeah. Floors get wet. It gets way more <laughs> traffic than your dining room table. And your kids are going to destroy that floor way more than a dining room table. Mm-hmm. And they're a leading manufacturer in floor finish. I'm like, hmm, that makes sense. Maybe I don't mm-hmm. believe this guy now. So I definitely want to try a dining room table in it. We'll have to see. Well, yeah. not to mention it's super easy to fix. I mean, even if it does get a small bit yeah. of damage on it, because it's got that molecular bond that it's just a one coat and done, you yeah. just sand a little bit where that damage is at, apply another coat, and I mean, you're yeah. finished. You're good to go. I am yeah. I am going into the deep end really fast. We're going to redo our hardwoods um, in our house. So we just have the, like the, we have about, oh, we, we don't have a lot. We only, only our living room in our entire house is hardwood floor, which is oh, weird because okay. then we have 12 different shades of carpet and tile. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we really do. We have, we have two different types of carpet and four different types of tile, I think. So um the Ver- we, Heinz 57 house yeah, <laughs> we, we are gonna um and i'll and i will probably have a professional company come out and sand the floors just because they'll do it so much faster um but then i'm gonna actually lay down rubio myself yeah so yeah i'm, I'm going from like opposite end of like only small projects have i played with it all the way like we're going big i'm doing <laughs> full the floor. blown full blown yeah that's kind so, of how I do. But things, I feel like it can't, it can't be, it can't be too hard to mess up. It's on the floor, so it's not like it's gonna start dripping everywhere. It's already on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Oh crap! Oh wait a minute. <laughs> it's like, supposed to. Be. As long as I don't get it it's over okay. on the tile. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be good, or on your shoes, but you'll you'll be all right. I've applied it to two dining room tables, and. I was so afraid I was doing something wrong. I was like, is this really all there is? And then when I was done, I was like, I feel like I should be doing eight more steps. I feel like I should be finishing and sanding and finishing. And sh- so for me, I really liked the Ruby Co- Rubio Monaco. I mean, it was fast and I loved the end grain. But there is a smell. Have you guys noticed? It there gives is me a, a headache. Smell. Like, yeah, it, it does give me a headache. Comes... You know, a lot of people says the smell is good, but I don't uh, know about that. I think it depends on the person. Yeah. And see, but... They say that it's a ZO VOC, and I did yeah. uh, that big hickory tabletop right here in this floor, and because of the zero VOC, I was like, oh, okay, I should be all right. Dude, we all had headaches um, after yeah. I did that table, and I don't understand what it was, and I even did something out in my shop and got a headache. And I was like, ugh. Yeah. yeah. There's something. There's something in it. I mean... I really like it, and I think it, it's great to take away all those steps that we have to do to finish. If it's one and done, then awesome. But there is there is that smell. I was kind of like, what is that? That's mm-hmm. interesting. It makes me wonder so. if it's the accelerator, if that gives it that smell. Yeah, maybe. Or something in the oil. I don't, I don't know. No, you know what? Know. Because I've, I've used um, just like their little sample bottles of just the oil. Mm-hmm. And... Mm-hmm. That's had the and same It's in smell. the oil. Oh. So it's so it's in, be... That's I think it's in the oil. Yeah. yeah, it's in there somehow, which is probably good for the wood. It's probably something that really helps it. But I want to know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Tell me what that is. <laughs> anyway, I I do like it though. It's good. Yeah. And it does, it kind of takes you out of your little comfort zone for normal finishes because you don't sand anywhere past one twenty, mm-hmm. and yeah. Uh, whenever you apply it, it's you know like with a, a scraper, so you don't you don't put very much on because you can scrape a whole crap ton around a huge table. And uh, I, I made that mistake. I made too much, and when I was sitting here squeezing oh, no. like a whole river down my table, <laughs> crap. So, that was probably uh, easier. I made too little, and I had to keep mixing over and over again because I made too little, and I was like, I'm not doing this right. I'd only get a little section anyway. It takes practice. 
But. Yep. People were asking me, it's like, how do you mix that? I mean, that sounds complicated to mix. I was like, no, we just get a tablespoon and a teaspoon, you know, three <laughs> teaspoons to a tablespoon. And it's a one to three mixture. Just dip once and <laughs> that's it. Yep. So like, yep. Oh. And, and they do the same thing to my um, spraying. Like, mm-hmm. well, I don't know how you mix. I mean, what do you what do you mean? Uh, like a one to four mixture or a one to three mixture. And I was like, okay, imagine there's lines on your cup. You know, divide yeah, it up into threes. A measuring <laughs> cup. Yeah, just just pretend your your cup is a measuring cup. Just divide yeah. it up into into four parts. You you know, fill it up yeah. to a one line right here for thinner, and then the rest of it's blacker. I yeah. do think I, I I am gonna go and and I've wanted to do it for a while. Um, really, I was gonna take them out of my kitchen, but I would probably die for that. Um, I am gonna go get some just like Pyrex like glass uh, mixing or not mixing cups like measuring cups. Um, mm-hmm. just like a, like a one cup and a two cup. Um, cause I think mixing things like Rubio or, or even, um, the, the pre-cat lacquer, um, with the retarder and stuff a little bit easier and then I can just pour it in, you know? Cause I think if that's, I... I think that's really where it comes down to it. It's percentages. I think that, that messes me up when people are like, Oh, 10%. I'm like, what, the, what, the, what, what's 10% of, of a cup or what's 10% of, and then you got to like figure it out, you know? So. If I were you, though, I wouldn't get anything plastic. I would make sure to get glass or metal. Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah, if you're doing glass ones. I was, I was definitely going to yeah. take. I was going to take those glass ones out of my kitchen, but I've got. I, get... I took one out of my kitchen because we've got multiples of, of measuring cups, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I got a small one, like a dinky one cupper, mm-hmm. and I took that out of my shop, and that's what I use for any of my liquids. And then mm-hmm. I've got uh, metal measuring spoons. That's it. it. A- a- April's definitely those more pi- understanding. Pyrex. Oh no, 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 she knows. <laughs> She's definitely more understanding because <laughs> we had multiple measuring spoons. So I took a one tablespoon measuring spoon many years ago, and I still don't live it down. <laughs> well, maybe yeah. that was her favorite one, Jeremy. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you didn't ask. I didn't. <laughs> you need to ask. I did. So yeah, I, she probably pulls her drawer out, and there's like 30 of them in there, and she's like, where is my favorite one? Yeah, <laughs> Where's yeah. the one so, that I like? <laughs> and it's been on a couple occasions she goes to get get her uh, parchment paper and it's in the shop and her <laughs> expensive baking food color like jail food color i definitely like <laughs> i uh i remember this one time like i, I turned a bottle stopper and i was like man i, I want to try something so I was like, oh, let's try food coloring and i just thought she had like i thought she had these like the little cheap drop ones and I was like, oh, she doesn't have those. I was like, yeah, this gel one looked pretty cool. So I took it and I made it, I turned it all purple and I, and I handed it to her. And n- not even thinking, like she got home from work. I was like, look, look, I did this. And she was like, why are your hands purple? And I was like, nothing. She's like, oh, hell no. You better not. Where, where's my food coloring? And I was like. It's out there with the measurements. I was like, it's, I know. I was like, it's in your baking stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is cry Never yeah. touched it. Yeah, she definitely, like, ripped me a new one for that. She was like, these things are, like, $5 a piece, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're great. Right. be a baker. Well, well, yeah, he's like, they're yeah, great for is. woodworking. Like, yeah. tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I, nope. don't, I don't bake at all, so we don't have that problem here. <laughs> yep, nope, nope. She's a baker, does so. your husband cook the most? No, I'll cook. I'll cook, but I won't bake. Oh. Baking is different, and baking is something I I don't have the patience for. My oldest son, though, who's 13, loves to bake. And he'll be like, Mom, can we make X, Y, Z? And I'm like, there's Google, because I don't know how to make it. So check it out. Go but it. I definitely admire. I know. I admire women who can, though. That's hard. It's hard for me, so I think that's awesome. Yeah, I'm, she can. I'm, the, I'm the cook in my family. And, All right. Uh, Mainly just because I work from home, so I'm the one that's always making dinner. But my mm-hmm. wife does not like to cook. Now, she can mm-hmm. bake. She likes baking, but does not like to cook. <laughs> I, I, left I don't her like it either. When I, I think it was WorkbenchCon. I think it was WorkbenchCon. <laughs> um, I left her with Hannah, and I was gone for a while. And whenever I came back, she told me, I, I found one of the pans, and it had a whole bunch of black stuff in the bottom of it. And I was like, what, <laughs> what happened here? It's like, well, I was trying to make a... A grilled cheese sandwich and it got too hot <laughs> <laughs> i burned it oh like oh 
Well, throw that thing away. <laughs> I've thrown away more. Subscribing. I've thrown away more. Ca- Hide the pants when you go out. I've thrown away yeah. more cast iron because <laughs> she gets it too hot and ruins it. And oh. I've tried and like I reseason it, and then she really ruins it. And I'm like, oh god. All right, all right, let's just let's just go to the dollar store and get some pans so it's cheap when we ruin it. We're good. <laughs> But no, she's she's been so she's been doing a lot of the cooking lately. Man, she stepped up her game in this cooking department in the last like six months. I feel like I'll turn around out like chicken fried steak and also I'm I know I had chicken fried steak twice this week. I need, <laughs> I, I need to go work out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, uh, do we have any more we want to add to this before we sh- before we close out? No, nah, I mean I think that's pretty good. I I would lean to say probably we all um, use spraying by convenience. Um, you know, I'm the only one that said an oil finish, but well, yeah, and I would like... also say too is that spraying spraying is good for people that are kind of like me and and Brandy that and you even you Jeremy that have a business that we're trying to meet deadlines for. Mm-hmm. Um, but if if uh, time is not a factor and you don't mind the the weight or the, even the extra time it takes to apply a finish, then you know brushing something on something that takes an, an overnight drying time, you know that's that's perfectly yeah. fine to use. We're not saying that you have to do spraying or anything like that. Yeah, or if you don't have the space for it too, you know, like I yeah, I don't or I facilities. I don't know if I'll be doing a whole lot of spraying through the winter time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I know I know you can do it in your shop, and it's more than likely going to dry before it touches down, but I, I don't know something about that so i'll probably be doing you know most of the finishes through the winter time with something else and so, you can brush inside a lot of times too yeah. like i will bring my pieces inside if it's too cold and brush inside my house so that's an option too for diyers or people who are just hobby hobby builders like that's for sure it's something that works <laughs> Yeah. Just make sure you're well ventilated. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Well, honey? I just, I'm talking just water based. To finish. <laughs> I'm, talking, <laughs> I'm talking water based and no Rubio <laughs> inside either. <laughs> yeah, no. That's bad, bad stuff inside sometimes. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that was some good stuff then. Um, I like the, the variety that we had, and uh, hopefully, people can take some information away from that. So, before we wrap things up, uh, we'd like to give some contact info for you, Brandy. So how do people get in contact with you if they want to reach out? They can find me on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, and my webpage, all at Eternal Harvest Home Decor. And there's always message areas in each of those socials where you can reach me. Oh, and on YouTube. Oh, well. Yeah, don't forget the YouTube. Yeah, I've seen some of your TikToks too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, your... I'm so addicted to TikTok. It's bad. <laughs> I so saw like South or not South Park. What was it? Uh, Family Guy one with the yeah, lighter yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, uh, Jeremy, how can people reach you, dude? Um, yeah, you can find me over at my website, countrysideworkshop.com. Uh, you find me on Instagram, Countryside Workshop, um, Facebook. I would say the, probably the quickest way to get hold of me is. Uh, DM me on Instagram. I'm actually pretty quick um, through Facebook messages now as well, just because I feel like I'm on Facebook all day for work anyway. So um, they usually pop up on my phone for for you know both the podcast and work and Countryside Workshop all at the same time. So I'm just like, ah, which one is it? No, oh, no. no you don't want to reach out to me. Fine. <laughs> You're but you do somebody? have a contact contact tab on your website, so yeah, that'll I do. Get you, that'll I get do. you everywhere. Uh, so if you want to reach uh, Sam and myself, uh, respectfully, she does have a website, which is uh, samryandesigns.com, and I am on rhwoodshop.com. All of contact information for both websites are listed there. You can find all of our social media stuff there as well. Uh, but if you are wanting to get in contact with the podcast itself um, for all three of us and maybe even the guest host that we had on at that time, uh, you can go to uh, email and send us a, an email via kickback at woodshop101podcast.com. Or you could go to the website, which is woodshop101podcast.com. Uh, we also have a voicemail that you can call uh, from any phone, landline, whatever, uh, which is 409-234-3959. There you can ask questions, and we'll feature them on air. 
And if you want some better audio, you can use the voice memo app that is equipped on your phone. Just record it and then email it to us with the email address that I just gave you. Um, so that just about wraps it up for this particular episode. And Brandy, I know that you are aware of uh, my YouTube channel and you've probably heard a couple episodes of this podcast before. So you know how we end it, if, especially if you've I, saw us at WorkbenchCon. <laughs> I don't know if I know. You're putting me on the spot. What do we do? <laughs> well, we, we always like to give a great big boom at the end. So you think you're up for that? Oh, yeah. yes. I guess I'm sure you heard it at WorkbenchCon. We, we rattled the ball <laughs> a couple times. So okay. we, uh, we do want to uh, thank Brandy for being on the show. And she will be on our next short episode, not to mention our after show. Uh, so be sure and tune in for those. So thanks for joining us on this episode, Brandy. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys, yeah, for having me. awesome. So from Jeremy, Sam, who is not here, Brandy, and myself, we want to wish you guys well. Please be safe in your shops, and we will talk to you on the next podcast episode. So one, two, three. Boom. 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 Boom.